of the Anglo-American Conference sees the Prime Minister and Mr. Roosevelt in conversation in the cabinet room of Washington's famous White House. The two great statesmen have worked vigorously on allied grand strategy. Mr. Harry Hopkins and the President's personal and naval assistants are also present. It is in the capital that a joint session of Congress awaits the momentous words of our Prime Minister. For the first time in American history, the elected representatives of the United States will meet a British Premier on the floor of their own seat of government. Surrounded by an army of pressmen, Mr. Churchill is about to win the cheers of the members of Congress and the whole of America. The Prime Minister's oration in the Senate chamber has been acclaimed in both countries as an historic masterpiece. The fact that my American forebears have for so many generations played their part in the life of the United States and that here I am, an Englishman, welcomed in your midst, makes this experience one of the most moving and thrilling in my life, which is already long and has not been entirely uneventful. I, I, wish, I wish indeed that my mother, whose uh, memory I cherish across the veil of years, could have been here to see. By the way, uh, I cannot help but reflecting that if my father had been uh, American and my mother British, <coughs> instead of the other way around, uh, I might have got here on my own. <laughs> I should like to say, first of all, how much I have been impressed and encouraged by the breadth of view and sense of proportion which I have found in all quarters over here to which I've had access. I am so glad to be able to place before you members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives at this moment when you are entering the war the proof that with proper weapons and proper organization we are able to beat the life out of the savage Nazi. <laughs> Lastly, if you will forgive me for saying it, to me the best tidings of all, the United States, united as never before, has drawn the sword for freedom and cast away the scabbard. Twice in our lifetime has the long arm of fate reached out across the oceans to bring the United States into the forefront of the battle. If we had kept together after the last war, if we had taken common measures for our safety, this renewal of the curse need never have fallen upon us. It is not given to us to peer into the mysteries of the future. Still I avow my hope and faith sure and inviolate that in the days to come the British and American peoples will for their own safety and for the good of all walk together in majesty, in justice and in peace. <laughs>